to Belleville is about a road trip that starts at my home in East Highland, California and travels northeast into the heart of the San Bernardino Mountains. The route is almost entirely on California Highway 38. The journey ends in the Holcomb Valley, which is north and above Big Bear Lake. This is where the gold rush town of Belleville thrived in the early 1860s after Bill Holcomb discovered gold there. The trip is 60 miles long and the history along the way travels back in time, more than 200 years. There are 13 historical stops on the road to Belleville and they are marked out on this map. I'll make a short video for each stop to showcase the people and places that pioneered the rich history of the San Bernardino Mountains and foothills. Shannon Ray's book, Pioneers of Mill Creek Canyon, has been the most valuable resource of information and photos I have found for the Sylvanus Thurman and Peter Forsey stories. Shannon's book is a must for enjoying the rich history of our San Bernardino Mountains, especially Mill Creek Canyon. Stay tuned to the end of the video where there will be a link to purchase this book. Stop four on the road to Belleville is the story of the first sawmill in the San Bernardino Mountains. After leaving stop three, the story of the Zanha in Greenspot, we travel 2.9 miles to our next historical stop. This story is not just about the mill, but the two men most identified with it, Jean-Louis Vignet and Daniel Sexton. This aerial view shows the narrow opening of the mountain gates. This is where you'll leave the valley, the wash, and enter Mill Creek Canyon. Mill Creek Canyon got its name from the sawmill that was built just beyond the mountain gates. It's said that it was Daniel Sexton who was the one who first called this Mill Creek Canyon. Information obtained from the city of San Bernardino indicates this photo is from 1895 and is of the last building of the sawmill that was first established by California pioneers Jean-Louis Vignet and Daniel Sexton. This story starts with Jean-Louis Vignet, California's pioneer and the father of California's commercial wine industry. Born in Bordeaux, France in 1780, Jean grew up and became a local public servant. King Charles X came to power in France in 1824, and the political atmosphere in France changed. This led Jean to leave his homeland and seek his fortune elsewhere. After several stops on his journey, Jean landed in Honolulu in 1827. Here, he started a new life near the town. He grew sugarcane, vines, turkeys, and a few cattle. Jean went on to become the manager of Oahu's rum distillery. In December of 1829, Hawaiian queen Ka Amanu outlawed the manufacturing of rum and the sugarcane fields were burned. After the outlaw of alcohol in Hawaii, Jean set sail for Alta, California and landed in Monterey in 1831. Here, he applied for a Mexican government security letter to allow him to stay in Alta, California. When applying for the letter, Jean listed himself as a cooper and a vintner. Jean made his way south to the Los Angeles area and purchased 104 acres of land on the banks of the Los Angeles River. He named his property El Aliso after an old tree growing there.
This is a drawing of the ancient sycamore tree that gave Ella Lisa Winery its name. The tree was revered by the local Native American tribe. The local vines that Jean acquired from the Padres would not produce the quality of wine he wanted to bottle. So he sent for Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc vines from his native Bordeaux, France. To the left is an old drawing of the Los Angeles River Basin, and to the right is a drawing of the El Aliso Winery Building. Here is an ad promoting wine from the El Aliso Vineyard. The ad says the wine is of the San Savian brothers. They were two nephews of Jean-Louis Vignet from France. In time, Jean sold El Aliso to his nephews. Pictured here is Pierre Sansevain, who started working for his uncle at his sawmill in Mill Creek. The reason Jean set up the sawmill in the canyon east of the San Bernardino Rancho was to cut oak trees to make wine barrels for his El Aliso winery. Jean got permission from the Mexican government to set up a sawmill in the San Bernardino Mountains. A settler from Louisiana named Daniel Sexton was hired to run the sawmill. Jean-Louis Vignet went on to buy land all over Southern California, planting vineyards, orchards, as well as raising cattle. Here is a photo of the dashing young Frenchman and one of his gravestone. Also pictured is the Evergreen Cemetery in the Boyle Heights area of Los Angeles. This is where Jean was buried after his death in January of 1868. Jean-Louis Vignet was a true California pioneer. Enter Mill Creek Canyon and California pioneer Daniel Sexton to our story. Daniel Sexton was born in Louisiana in 1818 and at the age of 23 found his way heading for California. Daniel joined the Roland Workman Party headed for Alta, California. The party left New Mexico on September 6, 1841 and arrived in Southern Alta, California on November 5, 1841. Benjamin Wilson was also part of the same wagon train. His story will be told in another video about Bear Lake. After arriving in California, Daniel went to work for Isaac Williams, who managed Rancho Santa Ana del Chino. The rancho was a land grant from the Mexican government to Antonio Maria Lugo. Isaac Williams sent Daniel east into the San Gregorio Pass to cut timber for the rancho. Daniel hired men from the native Cahuilla tribe to cut and haul timber down the mountain north of the San Gregorio Pass. When asked if the Americanos celebrated feast days like the Catholic missionaries did, Daniel told them about the 4th of July. On July 4th, 1842, Daniel with his Cahuilla workers hoisted the first American flag just north of the San Gregorio Pass. Daniel made the flag himself and took credit for being the first person to raise the stars and stripes in San Bernardino County. This is a photo of Mission Indians and Daniel married a Mission Indian named Pacifica. 
Pacifica was the niece of a local chief named Solano, a Cahuilla tribe leader. Chief Solano was known to have shared the location of the Temescal tin mines that are near today's city of Corona with Daniel. This is a street sign from Loma Linda named after Chief Solano. This is not Pacifica, but this young Coahuila woman was photographed in 1926 by photographer Edward S. Curtis, also pictured here. Daniel Sexton was friendly and supportive of Native Americans and throughout his life was involved with Mission Indian tribes of Southern California. This is the notice of Daniel Sexton's death in the Colton News. In this article, it says Daniel lived in Colton for 16 years before his death in 1899. As well as him being a veteran of the Mexican War and being so knowledgeable of early California history. Daniel and Pacifica Sexton were buried in unmarked graves at the Hermosa Garden Cemetery in Colton. My journey has now entered the mountains and the story of the first sawmill in the San Bernardino Mountains is being remembered on the road to Belleville. Mm -hmm.